At our last sitting, a concern was raised with respect to the pace of delivery of hurricane reconstruction assistance to residents of the southern Bahamas, more specifically so, Meguana, Ackland, Cook Island, Long Key. I believe it opportune, therefore, to provide an update on assistance delivered to residents in that constituency. That is, Mr. Speaker, assistance delivered in the aftermath of storm, hurricane, and highway. I begin with Ackland, sir. During the relief phase of the assistance, which was the 26th of August to the 12th of September, some 500 cases or 2,000 gallons of water, together with substantial food stuff, cleaning items and tarpaulins, a generator and other tools were provided for the immediate relief of residents of Acklands. These goods were shipped by NEMA with the assistance and collaboration of the Bahamas Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and the Methodist Habitat Organization. Four members, four Marines from the Royal Bahamas Defense Force were deployed to Acklands to assist with the initial clearing of debris, the conduct of damage assessments, and further to assist with securing and distributing relief arriving on the island. The repair and restoration phase of NEMA's assistance began on the 19th of September and continues today. <clears throat> Damage assessments are completed by the Department of Social Services with the assistance of the Ministry of Public Works and Transport. Identified some 105 homes had been impacted to some degree or other by the storm, which would require assistance from NEMA and affecting repairs. Damage to 87 of the dwellings was categorized as minor, 17 houses sustained major damage, and one had been completely destroyed. At my point of the speaker, there's a difference between houses that are incomplete and unoccupied, and houses that are occupied. The numbers I'm talking about are occupied dwellings. These houses are spread among the settlements as follows. Hard Hills, three. Snug Corner, seven. Spring Point, two. Delectable Bay and Poppy Bay, four. <coughs> Selena Point, five. Lovely Bay, 13. Chest is six. Pine Field, Anderson, six. A total of $152,578.40 has been expended on the purchase and shipment of building materials for Acklands. A total of 47 persons received materials from the first <coughs> delivery. A, section, a second shipment departed Nassau yesterday and uh, I'm told is now at Acklands. Some 24 builders from the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the Ministry of Public Works and Transport, and a member of the Cabinet Office staff were deployed to Acklands to assist with the repair program. Thus far, repairs have been commenced on 15 homes of senior citizens, a first priority. Some $62,000 have been spent on accommodation for the air and transportation for the repair teams from Nassau. Additionally, two teams of residents of Acklands, of nine individuals each, one from North Acklands and the other from the South and Central, will be engaged to commence repairs on additional homes following upon the arrival this morning of the second shipment of building materials. <clears throat> I must advise, though, Mr. Speaker, that as a result of complaints <clears throat> emanating from Acklands in regard to the distribution of relief goods and the engagement of local residents of Acklands, NEMA dispatched a retired Defense Force officer to Acklands to review the list of materials being assigned to each of the repair projects and also to review the selection process for engagement of the repair teams to be made up of residents of Acklands 
to ensure, ensure fairness in both processes. processes. Additionally, I can advise the director of NEMA will visit Athens before the end of this week to also have oversight of this matter and to lay any fears or concerns regarding the fairness of the repair and reconstruction program on the island. Regrettably, Mr. Speaker, this will result in some delay in the start-up of this latest phase of the repair program. I note that Athens is the only island which I have received a complaint from in connection with the question of fairness or otherwise of the distribution of goods. I might also say, Mr. Speaker, that I understand the concern of some residents of a place like Acklands, which has a depressed economy, that the government is going to hire 18 people for three weeks or more, that there will be many persons who think that they ought to be considered. And while, as a general rule, we may well have employed the 18 persons for the entire three weeks, there may well be opportunity for different persons to be employed one week here, another week here, for another group, etc., etc., so as to square the benefit of the expenditure in the community as wide as is possible. Because we in the government, speaker, always seek to find means by which, when justified, we can provide an income um, for persons in the more depressed portions of our country. Um, it is expected, though, that when the two teams are selected, um, it appears of an average of six homes per week, 12, uh, will be undertaken, that is 36 to 40, over the three-week period, while they are in Athens, where permitted. <laughs> Labor costs associated with the exercise is expected to result in our paying to residents of Ackland some $17,000. The speaker, I also pause to make this point that while it is our preference to encourage people who have families that the government through NAMO and generous donations from the private sector provides the materials that family members ought to consider providing the labor. Um, the reality being what it is, we are engaging and paying for the labor in Acklands and a number of other islands so as not to have an issue as to whether or not um, cousin so-and-so who promised to come this morning hasn't shown up or the rest of it, etc. So that we can bring relief to people in the shortest possible time. <laughs> I also wish to advise Mr. Speaker that a Mr. Bruce Knowles, whose name has been called by the member for Macau, an aged resident of Long Key, who was left homeless as a result of the destruction of his home by Hurricane Andrew, uh, Hurricane Irene, has been relocated to an unused but habitable teacher's cottage on Long Key, where he's now comfortably accommodated. As an aside, Mr. Speaker, I asked my office to find out my education. Are they paying rent for the teachers there in another place than they have this? <laughs> this habitable place that's unoccupied. I, I, I don't get, I, I just got asked this morning. <laughs> a decision, Mr. Speaker, is to be made on well to permit Mr. Knowles to continue to reside in this Bahamas government house as a tenant indefinitely, or whether NEMA will construct a replacement dwelling for Mr. Knowles. I turn to Crooked Island, sir. As an Ackland, during the initial period, 26th of August to 12th September, some 500 cases of water were delivered to Crooked Island, together with food, cleaning items, tarpaulins, generators, and family packs by NEMA, Bahamas Red Cross, Salvation Army, and the Methodist Habitat. Four members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force were deployed to assist with the initial cleanup, damage assessments, and with securing and distribution of relief items. The repair and restoration phase of the recovery commenced on the 19th of September and continues today. The Department of Social Services and the Ministry of Public Works and Transport identified 44 homes damaged in Cook Island and in need of assistance with repairs. Of these, 37 dwellings sustained minor damage, 6 sustained major damage, and 1 was destroyed. Building materials have been purchased for NEMA's repair program in Crooked Island at a cost of some $16,000. Today, the team of repairmen comprising of 18 Defense Force officers, 
the Ministry of Public Works and Transport, and skilled and unskilled workers resident in Ackland, in Crooked Island, have completed repairs to 12 homes. Additional building supplies are now en route to Crooked Island. I might say, Mr. Speaker, that the exercise is going more smoothly in Crooked Island than in Acklands, and uh, it may well be that the administrator in Crooked Island is a former official of the Ministry of Education who does have building experience and who does have the capacity to organize people, etc., etc. <clears throat> Some $10,622 has been expended on transportation, accommodation, and per diem for the team of 18. With the arrival of the building materials in Crooked Island sometime today, I suppose, a team of nine individuals will be employed from amongst residents of Crooked Island to advance the repair work program on the island. It is expected that the team will complete repairs to some 15 to 20 houses that have been identified for assistance. Three week wages for these nine workers will amount to $8,638. I might, I might, as an aside, Mr. Speaker, say that this is the only one that had to come to my attention because we have standard rates um, that we pay a foreman, $500 and something dollars a week, and the labor so much, etc. And that um, from Crooked Island, they sent us a bill for much higher than that. And, yeah, I, and so it came to my attention to say, you know, we're going to pay standard wage. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <clears> honourable <throat> members will also recall that during the emergency relief period, name and record a shipment of food and water dispatched from Jamaica, the focal point for Sedema's sub-regional group to Mayor Warner. <laughs> name has also directed in excess of 500 cases of water to Mayor Warner to get with food supplies, plastic sheeting, cleaning items, and family packs, which, as is the case in Acklands and Crooked Island, was supplied from Namus Reserves and from generous donations, again, from the Bahamas Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and the Methodist Habitat Organization. As in the case of the other islands in Macau, the Namus Repair and Restoration Phase of Hurricane Reconstruction commenced in Mayor Guana on the 19th of September and continues. Assessments by the Department of Social Services and the Ministry of Public Works and Transport identified 79 homes damaged by the storm, which qualified for assistance. Fortunately, all of the damage sustained in Mayor Warner were found to be minor in nature, mainly damage to roofs. $6,946 has been expended on the purchase of building materials for repairs to be undertaken in Mayor Warner. Thus far, building materials for repair work have been distributed and advised to all 79 homes. Repairs to four homes have been completed with the assistance of Mayor Terms. The arrival of additional building supplies in Mayor Guarna sometime this week will permit a team of nine residents of Mayor Guarna to be hired locally to commence additional repairs primarily in, on the homes of senior citizens over the next three weeks. And here again we expect to spend some $8,600 on that exercise. The teams are expected to complete repairs of six homes in each week for a total of 18 houses over the next three weeks. Speaker. Um, in other parts of the Bahamas, um, such as in Elutra, um, we have opened up accounts at various building supply companies, and the administrator um, has been authorized to access materials in deserving cases. But as indicated in the fifth report, the report I made on the fifth of October. Um, on the aftermath of the storm on public utility services, water, electricity, and telephone, they were expeditiously restored around the country for less than one month of the past from the storm. I take this opportunity to also advise our members that NEMA, Hurricane Repair Teams, are also being engaged in San Salvador, that is, local persons are being employed to undertake the repair work in San Salvador, Long Island, Central Elutra, North Abaco, and in Kell Island. In this regard, Farm Island administrators are coordinating identification of suitably, suitably qualified, skilled individuals to conduct repairs on the affected islands. 
In, all, in virtually all cases, Mr. Speaker, building supplies are being provided to those homeowners able to organize the repair of their developments without further intervention by NEMA. In the case of senior citizens or other disadvantaged residents who qualify for assistance, repairs have been undertaken by the NEMA teams and the engagement of local persons. I also advise, Mr. Speaker, that the Ministry of Finance continues to receive applications for waiver of customs duty or refund of customs duty on goods purchased in the Bahamas to replace or repair structures and on items damaged and lost in the storm. As the period of exemption, the periods of exemption by the exigency order expires, I'll provide complete reports so that all members are apprised of the value of the hurricane duty waivers. I'm an also the speaker say how pleased I am with Captain Stephen Russell and his team with the Royal Bahamas Defence Force, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Ministry of Public Works and Transport, the Department of Social Services and all the other agencies of the government who have risen to the challenge presented by Hurricane Irene. I might also say, Mr. Speaker, that all of the public infrastructure that requires to be done is being undertaken. I, I, I watched a television last evening and saw where some teachers in Kell Island sat out because the repair of the school building um, in Arthur's Town had not been completed. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, the business I'm in, I expect unreasonableness, but I don't expect total unreasonableness. We are repairing schools in Kell Island, we are repairing the schools in Cook Island and Ackland and every place else. All of the damaged infrastructure are being undertaken by the government in a timely manner. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further statements and communications? Oh, oh, sorry. Order that the communication be brought up. I got a typo in here, so I have to change it. <clears throat> Order that the communication do lie on the table. Uh, I, 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 I can't permit you. I don't know whether the Prime would, uh, would accept. Okay, yes. Our Honorable Member for Bain and Grandstown. I have had some requests from residents of Bain and Grandstown. And I am, um, I tried to do some things myself, like the member for, uh, for the last chided me the other day. But, <laughs> but there are some things that are, are beyond, beyond me. Uh, some people live in rental accommodation, but they're renting from people that have a problem that the people themselves can't fix. That's one sort of problem. And then there are others who have had damage, particularly the roof. And, and um, I'm not sure that we get the same opportunity to uh, apply the name for assistance in your providence. The rules are, are clear. They apply to owner-occupied dwellings. They don't apply to rental accommodations. But I would expect that, I would, I would suggest that if you are able to identify the rental accommodations, that we can um, find a means of making contact with landlords and seek to see what can be done by the government and or the landlord. But name itself, the name is money <coughs> that has been spent for house and repair is donated money from the public. We have established a list of things that we will use this money for. And one of those things is owner-occupied buildings. Now, that doesn't say the government can't do something else, but not in that account. Okay? So um, um, I'd be happy if you would make the list available to, to um, Captain Stephen Russell. Neymar, or, or to myself, and we will see what we can do. Okay? <coughs> yeah. Honorable Member for West End and Bimini. Thank you, but in the budget of last year, um, I think $5,500,000 was set aside uh, for a similar first type of assistance that uh, the member for Baytown is referring to, because I've had occasion to write the Minister responsible for Housing asking for type assistance, because we have these difficulties. <laughs> For small housing repairs, people who meet the social services, um, qualifications, etc., etc. But I believe that you're talking about 
place has been damaged as a result of the hurricane, as opposed to the regular government um, assistance program. And so it is possible for the government to, to, um, to assist, um, not necessarily for the name account.